Hey there, how are you doing? Today I'm here to talk about an interesting find last non-blank value problem. It's quite a mouthful. I got an email from one of the blog readers earlier in the day asking how to solve this problem. The problem goes like this. They have some accounts and some additional information for these accounts next to it. So certain accounts have one or two columns of information. Some other accounts have six, seven, 12, I don't know how many columns of information. And given an account number, they wanted to do a lookup where they look up the account number, find the corresponding extra columns of information and get the very last column of that through a formula. Now, the easiest way to do this would be to kind of have an extra column added either at the end or the beginning and that just extract the last value and then use that in the lookups. But unfortunately, because they don't have control over the input data, because the input data is coming from another system and every day they will need to do this, um, they were asking, you know, if there is a formula to uh, do it. So I'm going to show three different formula options. The first one is your traditional index match or VLOOKUP formulas. We will use that with a sneaky little trick to extract the non-blank value. So that's the first one. It's going to be mind blowing. The second one is to use XLOOKUP function. Now XLOOKUP function has this little very useful argument using which you can tell XLOOKUP instead of looking from top down, look from bottom up. Okay, so when combined the bottom up lookup with the wildcard option, we can actually find the values from the bottom because we are really looking for non-blank. So we'll just go to the bottom and find the very first value and then that's the answer. So that is your XLOOKUP option. And the third option is to use index match along with the count a function. You could use count a function to count how many blank values are there that are not blank and then uh, in use that inside the index match. Along the way, I'm also going to talk a little bit about the very useful let function and how to use that to declare variables so that you can shrink your long formulas into short ones. So I hope you're up for this adventure. Let's jump into the Excel. So here is our file and um, we wanted to, for example, find the account number 2014, which is here and the last non-blank value, which would be bank. So this is how the answer is coming up. There are three different formulas and uh, we will go through them um, in, in one at a time. Let's just say this is the first one. Uh, this uses your traditional index match and lookup formulas. So we all know how to find 2014 and get the second column value. We could simply use VLOOKUP 2014 uh, and then in the table array here, uh, in the second, get me second column value and then false for exact match and then that'll find cash, okay? Now, the, the trick really is if I want to, for example, in a range, I want to just find what is the last non-blank value. How do you go about it? You can use either VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP or lookup formulas with approximate match, but find for something that is not going to be found in the data. It might sound a bit cryptic, so I'll show you the formula. We will say uh, HLOOKUP because we, are, we have the data going horizontally. And then we'll simply look up for something that is not going to be in the data, uh, especially the, the, the item that we are going to look for should be should appear at the last when you sort it in alphabetical order. So this is something like a bunch of Z's or Z, 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 Z. And then we will say um, in I'll just show you with one one set of data here. So we'll give that range as input and then say I want the value from the very first row. So essentially we want the last non-blank and then um, we we will say true for approximate match and then this will find the last non-blank value. In this case it will be freedom. But if you were to put some more extra items like uh, ec uh, extra, it will change there and if you delete it will go back to freedom. So this is the basic technique um, where we put in 
some sort of uh, text value that will be so um, last when you sort it so usually it, it is going to be just a bunch of sets and one trick to instead of typing these jets you can just use the wrapped formula to generate wrapped letter z for 10 times and that would also be the same because what the wrapped formula does is it will actually generate a pattern z z z z z for 10 times okay so this is the basic technique that's what we have used here uh, in in a pattern like this i've assumed that the data can have extra columns so i've just put that like this so we will work from inside out what we will do is we will say um, um, we, we are looking for pattern of z's five times uh, because uh, that's that will be like the lowest item when you sort it on alphabetical order you could put five ten or whatever uh, but you're just looking for something that is so um, it's not going to be in your data essentially and it will be lower when you sort it in alphabetical order and then so we look up that item but the data that we are going to look up is that row corresponding to 2014 right so in the earlier example that i showed i've just put one row but because uh, what we are going to look up that row will depend on what that cell is so we then use index formula index of this range match k3 that uh, cell 2014 in the column a and then get the exact match so it will return uh, for example one two three four five six so it will return six as the match number so it will give you uh, this index range and then six as the row we will not specify the column number for index formula what this does is index formula when you do not when you give a two-dimensional range like row and column range like this and specify that i want the sixth row but no column number then it will give you all the values in the column in the, in the row number six so you will get uh, in this inside little index formula you're gonna get a an entire array okay so that's what uh, we will get and then within that we are gonna look up that z z z z z and then it will do what is this lookup formula instead why are we not using hlookup this is because what lookup does is it will uh, it will be a shorter version it will always do an approximate match so we just we don't have to give any extra parameters and it will do the work so examine that formula in the download file if you are feeling a little bit lost but uh, uh, I hope uh, you know you're catching on so the second one is to use xlookup because xlookup has this interesting option where I can look from down so for example um, I can say um, xlookup and then I can give a lookup value I can I can want to look up anything because I just want to get the last value so anything means within double quotes star which stands for anything and then the lookup array is this is just a demo of finding the last non-blank value so i want to look up in that and then i also want to return the same thing okay um, and we will ignore the if not found match mode will have to be wild card because we are looking for anything that matches that pattern and then search mode is by default it is from first to last we will say it should be from last to first so this will go and uh, and find for that uh, thing now the the problem why this is coming up as hash n instead of actual number is because these are numbers and we are trying to look for a text value so that's why this is um, not working but if i were to move this sideways here i'm gonna get a uh, cache you could hear excel barking in the background <laughs> um, so this is uh, how that particular one works um, okay it, it doesn't really work for numbers but it will work for these values if you have numbers what you want to do is convert the number into text through a different function like uh, all you have to do is through lookup array you just want to ampersand empty space at the end that will turn everything into text and then you find it and then return the same value so that's will work okay so this is how the x lookup thing works now let's use that idea in in our um, formula here so this is actually using uh, two x lookups because it is um, 
it's not a single thing we have to actually find 2014 get the corresponding row and then find the last non blank value so the way uh, that that works is i think it may be easier if i actually show you another useful feature of xlookup which is xlookup 2014 uh, so i want to look up 2014 here and i want to return this value okay so what this does is it will return an entire row corresponding to 2014 all the so it's going to return an array so this is another feature of xlookup where uh, it will not just return one value if there is multiple values matching it will give you all of those in that row so because all of these are 2014 values it will come up and some of them will come up as zero so now this new array if i pass it on to the second xlookup then it will um find the last non blank value so that is the technique that we are using here um by also incorporating the let function so we start by declaring a variable let m row is that lookup array so we declare a variable saying uh, have a variable called m row which holds the return x lookup array so that will be corresponding row for 2014 once that is there then do another x lookup find a star in m row and then return the corresponding value from m row by using wildcard search from bottom okay so that's minus 1 and that will do that okay without using let function what would have happened is this x lookup would have become even longer because we will have to uh take this and use it twice once here and once there so because we are using let function it kind of becomes a shorter function that's all uh, but nevertheless the result will be same okay so this is that now let's just say you are still using an older version of excel and you can't use x lookup you can still use this approach here or this approach here so both of these approaches work uh, this approach i'm using helper column to showcase but you can also shrink that into one big formula so what we will do here is we will first find out how many values are there in 2014 so this is uh, simply using index formula uh, find out the corresponding row for 2014 and then just count how many values are there okay so that's count a count a because these are text values so we want to count everything uh within this to range the row number that is corresponding so essentially this will all be like that and uh, it will count and then say okay there are two values so that's number will be 2 once we know that i want the second value in this array okay uh we will then use another index match this this range index match 2014 and then get the second row so this is how it works you can use that particular function if you already have let function then chances are you also have x lookup function so then in this case it's better to use the x lookup function because it has the built in feature to look from bottom rather than top and that would be more uh, full proof rather than looking for um, z z z or something like that and if you are uncomfortable using with uh, this lookup multiple z or multiple z option then go with the count and index match option i hope i have thoroughly confused you with this complex examples of formulas but if not if you enjoyed it please give a thumbs up to this video and share it with some of your friends who are dealing with the challenges like this if you do find another way to solve this problem feel free to share that in the comment section so that i can also learn from you thanks for watching i'll talk to you again next time bye bye